Why? Why would you say that? Oh, 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 wait a minute, the oh, truth comes oh, out! You sound crazy right now. I sound crazy. I sound crazy. Do you think I sound crazy? I can't believe this horseshit. I, I, I can't. Alright guys, uh, you know, normally, uh, I'm here with people talking about, like, their art and themselves and their lives and stuff like that, and, uh, but this is a little different. Today I'm joined again with Lindsay Miller and Max Farinato to talk about media literacy. Uh, to, so, for those who maybe don't know, let's start off with, you guys, how would you define media literacy? You know, it's funny, you asked us to like look up stuff to maybe have talking points. Yeah. I'm totally going off the cuff, so I don't, uh, I got nothing but I So you don't research. You I don't, don't research. Take I don't this seriously. I don't read, however. Uh, so oh no, I would define that media literacy as being able to distinguish aspects of the medium that you're consuming and then uh, and then being able to say like you know look look beyond what's surface level and then say all right well uh, you know obviously you can interpret things in a lot of different ways but you know ha honestly i think a big part of media literacy is having empathy for the person that you aren't necessarily you, you are not and oh saying, yeah I didn't think about that. and then saying like all right even if i disagree with this or maybe i don't come from this perspective i can at least try my hardest i can i can meet this person halfway or even more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lindsay, would you add on and yeah. tell that? I mean, that's a really good answer. Um, I guess to add, my definition is media literacy is just being able to think critically about information as it's being presented to you. Yeah. Um, not taking everything just at face value and also kind of considering the ways in which the message is being presented to you. Um, you know, with the language that's being used, with, you know, if it's a video ad or whatever you're watching, who's in it, uh, how you're receiving the message, you know, are you reading something, is it online, what's the source, etc. Et yeah, that aspect I didn't really think about initially, because I thought kind of the same thing of just like, when I heard the term, I was like, well, it's, you kind of like understand what you're watching or like you can understand either like the the intent or that kind of thing but that was something I didn't quite think of initially was like in terms of like news or that kind of thing of like credibility and and that sort of thing and I did want to talk about that in, in a little bit yeah. but I think critical thinking is a really big component of it and my first thought was uh, thinking of how people have responded to this past season of The Boys if any of you guys have heard or followed that. I, I watched it, but I haven't heard what people said. I can assume what people said. Yeah. Um, people this season were like, hey, wait a minute. Is Homelander bad? Is yes. Homelander Trump? And that's been like the thing since season one. But people have gotten very, or when the season was airing, people were getting very up in arms about like they're making fun of a political party it's like but they have always so i feel like those people were not using media literacy which is so okay so i'll say i have my own opinion about the past couple seasons i think like i really like the first two seasons mm -hmm. and then when they got to seasons three and four there were parts of those seasons that i really liked but i thought they were being very like overly heavy-handed with what they were comparing these characters to because they were comparing them not just to like fascism in general but uh, just just like it's this guy yeah, and these yeah. people I'm like Jesus man like can you you, you you don't have to do exactly that like it feels like are we and this is my own I, I think like I think you're pandering too hard to the fact that some people can't look beyond what's currently being talked about yeah. and just the general idea. So like when you throw out certain terms that are just like very in now, which isn't a bad thing, but I, I kind of thought, am I wrong? I think it felt like kind of disjointed in terms of like the story they were trying to tell and then just... the This fourth season, because I haven't seen the third one since it came out, was a little odd where like... Uh, kind of everything with Huey was like disconnected to me anyway yeah. where it was like oh 
spoilers, his mom shows up, and it's like, but why? Yeah. Oh, probably next season, probably. And it's like, well, why did this happen? Uh, pro- probably next season, but it's like, but what about this season? Like, it just felt like nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny, that was actually the one part I really liked was the whole, did, did you actually watch I haven't that? seen The Boys, so. Oh, I'm, sorry. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. No, yeah. you're fine. It, I don't really care the, if it's spoiled. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> so. It, no, I, I liked that, but then it just yeah. nothing, it just didn't go anywhere. It was the most, like, emotional moment of that season, and I liked that the most, and everything else it was kind of like, all right, I think the show's played its hand. And yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a bit much. Mm-hmm. I feel as if just like nobody is satisfied with yeah, anything that. That's at this is. point. Yeah. So like we're gonna you know, let's just movies in general. They mm-hmm. put out the trailer. Every time I watch a trailer for a movie these days, I go to the comments and every single comment is like, they show the whole movie yeah, yeah, yeah. in the trailer. I, I can't go see this. Why is everyone spoiling it? Blah 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 <laughs> and all this shit. And then you go into the movie, and sometimes it's completely different from the trailer. And then it's like, oh, but then it's false advertising. This isn't what the trailer said it was going to be. And once again... But it got you in the sea. It's just like two yeah. different pieces of media influencing you. Yeah. Well, you're not going to be satisfied. <laughs> no, like, yeah, you're right. And there's this whole, like, I mean, get, like, allowing allowing everybody to sort of comment and have a voice kind of lends itself to people who maybe, once again, maybe they're not media literate or are critical. They jump to that first feeling rather than thinking about it first. You can certainly talk about how you feel, Mm -hmm. but then I think like maybe before you put a comment down, think a little bit, maybe let it gestate a bit, Um, but that's that's not how we are as a culture. Yeah. Even though we yeah. probably should do bit of that, or just turn off comments. I actually, don't look, like looking. I, I don't like looking comment sections because it's generally. Awful. Yeah, it depends on the video or the. Yeah. 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 I had another thought, just in terms of like nobody's satisfied. I think the other thing too is Hollywood in general is definitely trying to dumb down as much oh, media as possible. Mm. Um, I want to say it's just because of streaming, right? Just the more content you put out, the more views you get. But it's also like nobody trusts their audience anymore. So I think that's why a lot of these things are like really clearly spelled out, um, especially with like with trailers and like with some kind of movies. And then you have the people who get pissed off who are like, oh, well, I don't need this spelled out for me. And it's like, well, you're not the... I know. The target, target, target demographic. The target demographic, yeah. right? But it's also like, who is the target demographic for anything? Like Anyone and everyone, yeah. it seems, yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Like the broad, the yeah. only point to make these things now is to make sure the, the, that line goes up. If the, if the money is not being generated, then it's like, well, then what do we do wrong? Television and corporate entertainment, in order, in order to make because it's so expensive, in order to make money, it has to appeal to a very wide audience, which means it has to find things that a lot of people have in common. I don't know, man. Like, maybe you can't make that line perpetually go up. Yeah. You, can't, you can't make exponential money over time, and maybe it's best for you to just, like, you know, diversify the portfolio by saying, you know, this movie ain't going to be for everybody. It's going to be for people who like this genre. So, but Max, you know, they don't like risks. I, you're, I know, I know, <laughs> but that's literally what I mean. It's like it's that's the that's the main problem with. Uh, I don't want to get into a whole like oh, it's capitalism's fault thing, but but it is capitalism's but, but it is. fault. It is capitalism's <laughs> fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we no. got to the main point. We got everybody, to the main point. it is it is that it is just like you know when they discover as soon as they discovered. Was it Jaws is like the first summer blockbuster yeah, yeah. when they start to standardize things and say like, oh, I think we figured out how we mm-hmm. can get people in the seats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like, all right. And then it just kind of got worse and worse from there. And I like Jaws. I think that's a good movie. I, it but, is good. But, uh, but like it was like a, they, after, what was that? Was it New Wave? The 70s New Wave period mm-hmm. of film where I, I I'm maybe talking in my ass, but my friend who's more into film than I am uh, said that. It's like, yeah, during the 70s, like, producers kind of let 
creatives they like not give them blank checks but kind of say like do whatever yeah. you want yeah like yeah. we'll kind of look for stuff and, and so you got a lot yeah. of weird creative stuff and now that's over because they're like oh we don't need to do that anymore but the problem has always been with the studios although the beginning of the studios the entrepreneurs who ran the studios were sort of creative guys they would just take books and turn them into movies and do things like that but when i grew up it was the first time they allowed film students in. The issue came as, like, the day I arrived at Warner Brothers' lot for this scholarship, Jack Warner left. And then they sold it to uh, Seven Arts, which was in, in uh, Canada, and then another one sold it to Sony and to Coca-Cola, and suddenly all these corporations were coming in. They didn't know anything about the movie business. So they said, well, maybe we should hire kids from film schools. They so supposedly know how to make films. But then the studios went back to saying, well, we don't trust you people, and we think we know how to make movies. What's weird is that they love the story of, we gave these, you know, early filmmakers, you know, just a measly $2 million, and we had no faith in the project, and then it made $50 million, and actually, we had faith all along. Oh, those are so funny. Um, like, they love that story of, like, and also with returns, right? It's like, we spent less and we made so much, and our profit mar margins are, you know, whatever. Um, with, like, Caddyshack's a great example of that. And, uh, oh, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Did, or, that, uh, actually, fun? Animal House, but then later Caddyshack, too, because that was the sequel. Or not sequel, but their follow-up. Um, but to go back real fast about like trailers especially I forget the name of the movie it's that Tom Hardy biker movie that was kind of released but it wasn't and then like Isn't another company literally bought. called like the bikers though sure I think Why it's not? literally <laughs> called the bikers the trailer makes it, it paints the picture that this movie is just gonna be like the show Sons of Anarchy if anyone's seen that show and as someone who has seen that show I saw the trailer and going I don't need to see that movie because it looks like the plot of basically the first season of Sons of Anarchy. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they cut it that way so somebody who likes Sons of Anarchy will go, oh, that's kind of familiar. I'm, I'll check that out. Like, I don't know. Um, and then my question to both of you guys is like, we're, you know, obviously uh, in like creative fields and have interests in it and, and, and that kind of thing, but to like the average person who doesn't make stuff but you know watches stuff um what if they're kind of watching this going like well who cares about media literacy like how what would you say to them i guess to be like yeah why is it important to maybe think of a little bit i mean just to be like a well-rounded individual <laughs> Uh, but that sounds hard. Be able to interact with the world around you, mm -hmm. you know, thoughtfully. Mm -hmm. I think that's another point. Um, and also just like, it's about like what you said about empathy. Um, it's really just about having empathy for others. Um, there are so many things that I don't agree with online, um, but I read it. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, that is your point of view. I'm... That's your point of view. Like that's just it. I and can't you're cheat. About it. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, and you don't like. You're not like. All right. At least I know. It's not unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing too. Is just like education. Um, so many people are just like kind of scared of kind of furthering their education. Um, but and it's so easy to learn about different things, especially now with like just technology in general. It's all literally like, right? Yeah. To um, be cliche, like, it's all right here, man, in your pocket. And I think in general, too, it's really kind of a fear of, A, the unknown, but also a fear of children in general not knowing these things. Yeah. More often than not, you know, it's either at schools teaching you things or their parents teaching you things. Mm -hmm. Right now, in schools, especially public schools, shit's getting banned all the time. Banned books. Uh, for, really? Yeah, believe it or not, we're banning everything. I kind of thought we'll banned ban books was like time. We'll ban everything but the Holy Bible, yes. As it, never mind, I was going to say, as it should be. <laughs> the Holy Bible is more violent uh, yeah. than... The Holy Bible is fucked up, dude. I've read it. Oh Old my God. Testament fans, anyone? It's crazy. The real metal shit, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's wild. I didn't know that 
book uh, banning was like still a thing or yeah. a thing again. And it's mostly you know That's stuff sad. like targeted towards you know the LGBTQ community oh, things yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of money also is going more towards private schools, and those private schools are more often the than not like yeah. they're the religious. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's fine. Because um, you're right, the voucher, I don't know quite what the voucher is, either. but I know what you're talking about. It, it was, it was, Are people getting vouchers to go to the schools? Yeah, something like that, I think. I, I hate it. I, I, I'm sorry to bring it you're up. You're going to have to like cut this part I, out. Just, <laughs> all right, so here's okay. what I think it is. I think okay. it's, it is a way for government funding to go less to public schools mm-hmm. and, then, and then towards vouchers for kids to go to private schools. And it's, just, and it's just like, why don't you just fund public schools? Yeah. Like, like no, but not everybody can afford private schools. But but, but here's the thing: what a, public what a schools mm-hmm. are going to teach you a certain kind of curriculum right. because it has to go. Every single child in the United States needs the same type of curriculum. There are a lot of people who do not like the general curriculum in general, even though it's very very basic. You know, you even get to high school and people are like critical race theory, it's like, calm d- we're learning about the history of the United States, yeah. we have to talk about this. Like, uh, it is part of the history, and yeah, yeah it's yeah. ugly, but that's just it. Yeah. Um, speaking of someone who just went to Connecticut public schools, uh, we did not learn any sex ed, we just learned about STDs. Um, I didn't even get to see the teacher put the condom on the banana, and I wanted to see that. But, uh, you know, we, we would talk a little bit about, like, the civil rights and civil war and slavery, but it was always very, like, I guess especially in high school where there was this kind of, like, well, you know that part. So, we'll like, you know, we'll dive in more about, like, James Baldwin and that kind of stuff, more like uh, society kind of stuff. But, um... Yeah, like, I don't know, like, our school did not go super deep, and that sucks, but from that experience, I'm like, why are people getting riled up? We learn nothing, and um, I feel like to to circle back to, I can't remember exactly what you said, but, uh, whereas, like, my school, it was very much like, learn this to pass a test, and then next week we'll learn other stuff that you need for just that one week, so I feel like if that is your... And I'm lucky where, like, I, my mom was a teacher, so she or is a teacher, but she was very big on, like, critical thinking in general and stuff, and not just, yeah, I learned this for a test and move on. She was very, like, into education, so um, I feel lucky in that way. But what I was going to say was, uh, if that, if, if just learning stuff for, like, a week or so and then moving on is sort of, like, your whole mm-hmm. base for learning and education, I can see why maybe someone doesn't think to look at multiple sources or different views um, like Fox and CNN is, is using like two you know broad mm-hmm. ends of the spectrum where it's like I, I can see whether like I don't know I go to work I I, I, uh, I watch TV I yeah. that, that I go to sleep that's it so I I'm glad you brought that up because yeah no I, I okay so I actually went to a private school Oh, Whoa, wait a minute, the oh. truth comes out! No, but I, want to I saw that you. voucher in your pocket. I, I want to tell you right now that this is actually the same shit. It's oh, the same shit there where I felt like... You had to wear a suit. And a, <laughs> yeah, you, had, you had to have a tie and the, and the short pants. <laughs> the short? What do you know short pants? <laughs> Blazer um, but, short pants. But I, I mean, like, well, I appreciate what my parents are trying to do for me. I, I grew up kind of like with this... Is it was an auditory learning disability, so trying to get information across to me was a little bit it was a little bit harder. So my parents thought, oh hey, you know, maybe what you need are smaller classes, mm-hmm. and so they did that. And while I did okay in school, I I too looked at school as more of a of just this thing I had to get through. Same. And now uh, there were moments where I had like teachers were like, oh, that's actually really interesting. But right now, as much as I could find this very interesting, I'm too stressed out having to get this shit done to care about what I could be learning here. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if other people felt that way, but I, I, it wasn't until after I was done with school that I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go to my local community college and take classes on things I want to learn. And I found, I found I had much more tangential learning through the media that I 
went, uh, I, I engaged with and said like, oh, I kind of want to learn, like, where does that originate from? Like, maybe this, like, like where does this, you know, this fantasy piece I'm, I'm, I'm reading about or watching, you know, where do they get their inspiration from? And I think it's that curiosity to look deeper at where this comes from and say like, oh, I like this a lot. I want to know more. Well, it's like if you listen to music that you like, and you're like, this is the best band ever. Well, where did that band get their inspiration from? And that's like, even if you just did that for anything that you like, I think that'll take you a long way. It's, it's like a muscle. You, you, like, you have to practice wanting to know something. But I imagine a lot of people, you know what? I bet they do feel like, damn, I have to get through this. I'm tired, I don't know why. I, nobody told me why I should be interested, and so they just never processed that growing up. So I don't, it's like, I don't blame them, but we should be letting them know. It's like, no, you should, because you could, you could enjoy more. You can enjoy so much more. But then there are those news networks that are like, don't worry, we'll tell you what you need to know, rather than saying like, well, how about you tell me to look at multiple sources? Because like, you're busy covering this But then this you way. won't watch their right. network all day. That's You'll right. watch them only some of the day. If you're, if you're a news network owned by a billionaire, <laughs> you shouldn't trust it. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should look at it and say like, all right, there's one source, let me look at another source, and then another, and then mm-hmm. another. And I'm terrible at keep up on the news. I get exhausted. I get, I, I, I'm like, I'm emotionally a wreck. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Yes. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. And I don't, I'm a fucking cis white guy. <laughs> I have less to worry about. So like, what the, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, this still. <laughs> when I watch the news, I kick my feet up. I kick oh my, my feet God. Up. I don't, I don't sit clenched. But it's, a, but it's like, even, <laughs> but even then, it, it's like, it's like, it's like, no, this is still worrisome. Mm-hmm. But if you're, if you, if you engage in trying to be empathetic, it's, it sucks because it's even harder to do that because you want to like say, oh, I should learn more, but I, I'm tired. It becomes more and more difficult to ask people to read or to look at a piece of art for an hour or to listen, to listen to a piece of music that's complicated and that takes work to understand because, well, there are a lot of reasons, but be, um, particularly now in computer and internet culture, everything is so fast. With social media with this like parasocial relationship too that I'm very interested in like um, on a side note where it's like these people who act like they know you or that they like you or they care about you in some way but really they just want either your watch time or your money because they want to sell you a product or like Mm -hmm. their shirt or it's a sponsored thing but it's you know like anyone can like take their phone, make something look very real, but then it actually ha- be an ad. Um, and, and I feel like since so many people, so many young people our age, younger, um, are on social media so much, I feel like at the very least, look at social media critically and be like, and I forget who said this, I think it was on a Steve-O podcast of all things, but uh, somebody said... Uh, in that regard of like, oh, this seemed real, and they're like, if it's if it's edited in a video or just on a video in general, they wanted you to see that, or they didn't want you to see something. Like they cut something, they left that in for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I feel like people don't get that because I feel like even though they understand that it's a video that people made, I think people assume that like this was all just one take and nothing was <laughs> cut out and nobody before recording said hey could you not bring up like that thing yeah. that happened that's the news that's an ad news ad 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 news news ad ad slideshow ad so i'm so used to like feeling like things are hyper edited that even you saying that i'm just like geez do people actually still think that like, it's all, i think so I I, yeah of, you know, like like you know, family vlogs on youtube or the whole idea oh, of like this crazy. is our live and like oh, there's of course you don't see it when, you know, the husband's, like, gets into a spat with his wife about, like, traffic, and she's like, hey, you gotta calm down, like, a little bit, and he's like, you know, you don't see those, like, tense moments yeah. of, like, rain, you bitch, <laughs> and the kid's crying, you know, you don't see that, you don't see the kid crying, being like, I don't want to be on camera, and they're like, do the somersault, like, do yeah. it. Did you see the, did you both see the video, there was, like, a mom and her kid in their car, and the kid was legitimately crying over something. 
the mom was like video vlogging and she's like oh honey you just have to cry like this and she's like no mom I'm really sad oh my god she's just like I was just like you're evil like I I, I I mean like I think if you're doing a family vlog unless you are so just sort of like I don't know shit's kind of like weird and narcissistic anyway but like, I, I I thought it was a good idea to like talk to people and like film that so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well these things all have good intentions at yeah. first and then it's so easy to spiral especially like yeah. when you talk about capitalism yeah. getting involved well when it becomes your income and like mm-hmm. your brand is you know like mm-hmm. right. or uh charles trippy and uh his first wife Allie, whatever ally speed that's Holy, a cool name i have not okay. heard that name yeah in years. What, what, what um th- th- this was uh they were big in like when YouTube started getting money and all that stuff, like 2009 and eight and like whatever, they were a couple who daily vlogged. I think they did other content too, but then that blew up like the Shay Carl people, like all the family daily vlogs blew up and then they got married. Then they got a divorce and then like they each started, you know, like went on their own on their own, but then like, Charles Tribby still had it. I guess he owned the channel, so it was still him daily vlogging. Then he dated, then he got remarried, and like, um, there was like controversy. Like, people, like any sort of like new host, or like with Game Grumps, or like any show like that, where like the new person comes in, they're immediately met with hate. Yeah. But this is a guy who's like, This is my new girlfriend, and they're like, you and like she got like a wave and then like we're getting married and they're like ah! like these 13 year olds were like ripping their hair out it's like how crazy is that where your your whole life is put on that platform it's just entitlement everyone's yeah. entitled these days and it's you see this behavior just like not just on social media but also in public spaces like concerts and mm-hmm. just like kind of the general I don't know attitude or environment of concerts is suddenly very like pushing and shoving and not very oh. like being considerate of others because they want to um, get an angle or something well, for, either, or, or just in general they just want to i feel like it's a lot of well i think covid ruined a lot of things but covid in general there was this generation that wasn't able to go out um you know i first started going to concerts kind of like on my own when i was like 17 18 when you're 17 18 and it's covid you can't go to those concerts, and so you don't really know how to act. You go in, oh, finally, no masks, we can do it. You're going to kind of go a little crazy if you don't necessarily know the rules or, like, general respect of, like, keep your hands to yourself yeah. and things like that. Um, you think almost with COVID, people wouldn't push and shove. They'd more just be, like, I'm staying that way from you. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's just, like, I, it, nothing is... And especially the performers don't owe you anything other than the show, too, right? Yeah. They're there to perform. They're not a fucking monkey uh, tossing bananas at you or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and there's just, like, I'm thinking specifically about, like, the Charles Trippy example. He's getting married, guys. Yeah. You're fucking 13. Yeah. Your, your little comment isn't yeah. going to change his mind about it. It's weird because the line is so blurred of, like, these are real people, but they're also, like characters mm-hmm. in a way where like you just see them on the screen and you're like yeah they're not like a they're not like a real person which is why I can be like you shouldn't be with that new woman you should be with your old yeah. wife and you're some random person on the internet commenting that um, mm-hmm. uh, dude actually that specifically I mean like I know it's supposed to be for fun but we have like characters getting shipped together <laughs> with the idea of that that is part of that social practice of just like, I think it's better to have it this way. Oh, yeah. But then they start, there are people like that who take it way too seriously. Mm-hmm. And then they, and then that sort of starts to bleed over into how they, they interact with people. And it's just like, but do the, their parents' generation even know what the fuck they're doing? Probably not. Because yeah. like, I'm, I'm older, so I got to grow up pre-internet and then go into the internet. So I got to do that and like I I do an art show I've been doing it for six years on Twitch and I'm about to do this new company with some friends where we're going to start trying to make stuff and I told them like look I, I don't when my friend asked 
do we want to have like a public Discord where we can like interface with the public? I said no. Or if we're going to have a Discord, it's going to be for like professional reasons and maybe for some people who want to be. What we're doing is kind of like a creative space. So if you want to do mm -hmm. stuff together or on your own, you can. But like we should leave it to just to, for people who are trying to use the space or just us. Because I think I think we need to like put our foot down honestly on people who feel like they need to constantly obsess over somebody else rather than working on themselves because yeah. that that shit to me is poison mm -hmm. and it, it, it like I can I can I've seen people in my show from like years ago and like you know I, my my stream is only 18 plus so you can't like be in there but even mm -hmm. I know <laughs> we draw crazy stuff um, but uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's but it is one of those things where like you know, even even these people who are like eighteen and older, like you know, they're they can be very socially underdeveloped and, and sure. stunted, and it sucks because like you're there to like just have a good time with people, and then you have to draw that line. And people who don't draw that line, it's like we can't control that because it's not like you're part of a network that says like you gotta, to, yeah, and not that they're necessarily being responsible, but I think there are a little there's a little bit more legal leniency when you have streamers on YouTube doing some heinous shit mm -hmm. and then or Twitch uh, streamers doing something. But because we've opened it up to everybody, how are you supposed to monitor the dysfunction that everybody's sort of getting involved with? Yeah. Um, and that's involving kids eventually. And even if you're doing a stream that's like where you're allowing younger kids to be there, you're still involving kids in potentially adult affairs. And mm -hmm. it's just like, I don't like any of that. I, I, don't, I don't, I like, it's, yeah. it's weird. To that's right, people. that's really complicated. And I yeah. think more and more you're having these conversations about like age gaps and like what exactly is inappropriate behavior um, and grooming and things like that. Yeah. I never heard this type of language growing up. I was always told, you know, stranger danger, like don't talk to people online, yeah. don't tell people like how old you are, things yeah. like that. But never anything about like, oh, don't like, if an older man starts hitting Messi or messaging, messaging you yeah. or something, and like, I don't know, I wasn't the, I, that's not something I just did. You know, kids go on chat rooms and things like that. That wasn't yeah. something I was interested in. Yeah. But just, yeah, like you said, growing up with technology and seeing how it's moved, suddenly there's this, all of this kind of language, and you really have to mm -hmm. think about how you're interacting with people just in case there is a minor on the other side of the screen. Um, yeah. I have to think about that a lot because, you know, I studied pornography for my master's degree, or at least it was a part of my studies. Mm -hmm. I can't really talk about that with kids and if I ever I shouldn't say this <laughs> well you could but then you're going to end up on a list and well, following I was this say, weird crowd and... what I was going to say is if I ever apply to a job mm -hmm. where I shouldn't say that because I'm working I work with these <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I still work at Bernard uh, <laughs> yeah if I, I had to apply I applied for a job once it was like working with kids I purposely left off all the pornography parts because like a i wouldn't be talking to kids about that yeah. it's not appropriate but b in fear that they if someone sees it i automatically get ruled out um and again my whole point with my studies is pornography is not a substitute for sex education right it is not something you should be or like when you present pornography it's fiction right yeah. mm -hmm. at the end of the day that's what it is it's fiction and that's what you have to be telling young people, um, because it needs to be taught in conjunction with uh, sex can, can I uh, add on to that real quick? Because yeah. I actually kind of had wrote that point down with porn specifically, where like, with reality TV and um, daily vlogging or content uh, on social media where it's supposed to look real, mm -hmm. I think people have the same thing with porn. Where it is fake, but like you're tricked, or you're you want to believe that like mm -hmm. it's real it's and 
It's yeah. engaging fantasy. And yes. and not to uh, not to sound too much like a white guy from Connecticut, but to quote David <laughs> Foster Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he did talk about in the nineties um, VR porn, and he's like, when that becomes more and more prevalent and better no one will want to uh, actually go out in the world and they will just stay at home oh, yeah. with their VR alone because it's easier, cheaper, and whatever else he said. Um, but yeah, where I feel like, like when, slightly in the realm, like when people are mad at people who start OnlyFans, where, you know, because they don't like the fact that someone is... Um, posting pictures of themselves or they, they don't like the, the porn aspect or whatever, I think personally that's been like a more of a not with the person but with it's just, you know, don't blame the um, don't blame the person supplying the appetite where it's like, hey, like I can make, you know tens of thousands of dollars a month if I post this, so like whatever, but like mm -hmm. it's same thing with like social media, same thing with all that where it's like but just more personal, where it's like this person pretends that they like you, care about you, yeah. for money and for all that, and like that's my only gripe with it. Not that people are sex workers or sell sex or that kind of thing. More of just like a these lone and yeah, like you. Some people could say like, no, they should know that they don't really. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like they should know that it's fake, but when you're like really lonely and you start messaging these like people I feel like the lines get blurred which is what I'm trying to like circle it all back to with like sure, social media yeah, in yeah. general like these lines are blurred because the technology is just going to get better and better and it's going to get easier and easier and more and more convenient and more and more pleasurable to mm -hmm. sit alone with images on a screen given to us by people who do not love us but want our money and that's fine in low doses but if it's the basic main staple of your diet, you're gonna die. That's an excellent point. Actually, that's a that's a great example for media literacy in a multitude of ways because it is something that it's not just like any other piece of media you engage with. You're getting a very a much more visceral, uh, intimate, intimate, for lack of a <laughs> really, no, if you know what really, I'm that's, that's um, exactly personal, it. yeah, yeah. Very personal experience. But then, if you are somebody who's not media literate, or not just media literate, but socially literate, you are going to look at them and say, like, "This is how I'm going to get off." But what if I want more? I could probably well, they're selling it, so maybe I could just ask them for more. And it's just like, no, dude, they're putting out what they want to put out, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to treat them like a person. And there's obviously, I know multiple people who are have only fans, and it's like no shame. Actually, get it. You're getting that work, yeah. and and it's and uh, it's it's hard. It's a job. Yeah. Um, you gotta talk to weirdos on the internet all day. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude I, that sounds I, terrible. Talk about just like, oh my god, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Like, just imagine not <laughs> not having an OnlyFans and, and having to deal with people messaging you, yeah, right. especially if you're, like, attractive. In general, like, I'm not doing OnlyFans, but you're still talking to me like I do an OnlyFans. Yeah. And then having to do an OnlyFans and then say, like, look, I have to lay this line down. You are not intelligent enough to yeah. understand where that line's laid down, so... I, I, I think it's, I mean, nature and nurture, but, like, we should be, we should, it's like, I agree with you, it's like talking about pornography with kids, like, like, yeah, inappropriate, but at a certain point, you need to tell them, you need to tell them, like, the right stuff of, like, look, there's this stuff that exists in the world, and I'm going to teach you how to be respectful towards people and the fact that this exists, so you don't act like an asshole to them, yeah. and then we can, we can all be cozy together yeah. instead of, like, one being yeah. a monster to another, and then <laughs> them telling you you're an asshole, and then you not understanding why you're an asshole. Uh, that's how I think you start to fix it. By and then you know putting her in the trunk of your car. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> oh, whoa. I mean hypothetical. Uh oh. It's in a broad minute. terms. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, um. No, yeah, like it. Yeah, uh, personally, right? Like even outside of school, my parents never sat me down and gave me the birds and the bees talk. I, I never got Same. it either. But yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. It, oh, interesting. None uh, of us. And, uh, and yeah, like, if, if porn is, like, your gateway into kind of what sex is or, like, just kind of un 
disaster. Not, yeah. It's a disaster. Yeah. That's you. You cut me right off, and that's a good point. No, no, because it was going to take me like thirty more seconds to get there. Like, and to yeah, to what you were saying of like, if you were like, well, if that's how the guy is in the video. I'm going to do that in real life, and then they're like, you're really like weird Don't and be weird. aggressive and like an asshole, and then. We know the story from there. You end up in the trunk of a car. <laughs> Medium plays a really big role in just how the message comes across. There's like all like mass communications theory about this that I could rattle off, but I'm pretty fucking tired, so I don't remember. Um, and on that note. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, it's kind of like I said, knowing your audience, knowing the advantages of certain types of media, Especially when you're using visual mediums, right? Print advertising, television, that's a lot different than like just words on page. Yeah. Um, TikTok even, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not on TikTok, but you got those short snappy little bits because uh, I have the attention span of a goldfish now. So yeah, yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, how you brought that up too. That's an excellent point. People's attention spans have, I'm gonna blame the audience here. <gasps> I think you, you, all yeah, all let's all, all at once. Wait, one, two, you. three. You motherfuckers have made it possible for certain pieces of work to get made because your attention spans can't fucking focus on anything. I just <laughs> go I'm, off. I'm list some names. This bullshit that's put out nowadays. It's just like, oh my god. Well, no, but fine. Seriously, Uncle, Uncle Grandpa. Uh, I, I am going to be Grandpa here. I'm just like. Oh no, I'm saying the show. Uncle oh, Grandpa. Oh, the show, Uncle <laughs> Grandpa. Uh, no, I, I do think like actually like the way we consume entertainment now has even me. I'm just like, fuck, I remember when I used to be able to focus way more yeah. on one piece of work at a time. I remember when I read books. I do. Oh my god. I, I don't still read. read. I don't, I don't, I don't I read don't, books. Good for you. I don't read books either. I don't, I, read, I don't, books. don't read every night. I forget because I get loser. tired. You're such a loser. It helps me books. sleep. <laughs> I have sleep problems. It helps me fall asleep. I'm a fucking nerd. But sometimes I'm tired and I don't, but I try to every night. That, that, no, Even just so little That's good. Yeah. That's good. The last book I read was on a Japanese 70s and 80s game developers and what it was like to make games back then. It was sick. But also that sounds interesting. Nice. It was very interesting. It was interviews with these people who probably don't even work in the industry anymore, but they were... I was just like, oh good, I can still read. <laughs> <laughs> That's me every single day. I'm like, oh god, I never read anything, like blah blah blah. And then it's like, Lindsay, you read the New York Times this morning. Yeah. You know how that to sounds, read. That Come that's, on. Yeah, that's yeah. even more impressive. I don't read the yeah, news every I, day. I don't either. No, that's it's like, fucking depressing as shit. True. Don't do it. I that's why I don't. Crosswords. Yeah. That's why I do it. I do a little crosswords. Well, cross, that's still working your brain and everything. True. That's something. Yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, as much as I love movies and stuff like that, it is all to manipulate you in one way or another. And I'm glad that uh, I learned about uh, visual literacy and even though at its base form that's just filmmaking techniques, but it's also like, but why? And like, it's, it's so basic, I don't, I don't like talking about it because it sounds like obvious, and, but you know, like, oh, this character's sad, well we should be close up to them so we can see how sad they are, and then, mm -hmm. you know, if they're close and you see the tear roll down, you're, as the audience, being like, oh my god, like, and then you add the music, and you know, and then, or, you know, we want them to be unsettled, Zolly, Dutch, all that stuff, where it's like, it's all just to manipulate you in one way or another, sure. and, yeah. Become emotionally empathetic so you can manipulate people. That's yes. The That's the message Like all YouTubers. Yeah. Manipulate. Just We're sociopaths. Yeah. Humans. Yeah. yeah. The end goal is sociopathy. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. thanks for doing this, guys. If, yeah, if, if is that it? Else, yeah, if there's nothing else to say, I, I that was guys. a good combo. Yeah. Good job. We're all very I, smart yeah. here. <laughs> good job. Good job. Oh, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good, good That's job. how we ended it last. Yeah, time, that's so right. I had to do it. I had to do it again. Yeah. I wish I was an influencer. I do.
Man, I wish I was an ant. They'd send know, me right? shit. Yeah, I say all that, like, I'm like, God, I hate social media. But, and I'm meanwhile, please. Let's yeah. sell out now so we don't have to sell out later. We'll talk about brands. We'll do it. I won't even say what kind of... I won't even say what brand this is until I get that check. 